my Adore, my 64, my Commodore 64. Hi there, and welcome to a Let's Type episode from the Commodore 64 Appreciation Society. This is a series where I reach back into the past and type out a program from an old computer magazine, and then when I finish typing it in, I play it. Today we are going to type in Blockhead from the August 1983 issue of Compute. This is the first program we're typing in from this one. There are a couple others for the 64 in that same issue, First Math and Clues, that we'll get to soon. If you're interested in seeing those, make sure to subscribe. And also, if you happen to like videos like these, check out the playlist of others that we've already done. Blockhead was written by Matt Guywer, and based on the description, it sounds like a simple action game. We control a guy named, well, Blockhead, who bounces around in order to pop a bunch of balloons. The game was initially written for Atari 8-bit computers and was ported to the 64 by Greg Peel at Compute. Very interestingly, the 64 version looks significantly different from the original. In the Atari game submitted by Matt Guywer, there are four rows of balloons at the top of the screen, and the idea is to keep Blockhead soaring in the air until he pops them all. There was an old arcade game called Clowns that it kind of reminds me of. As an aside, I dumped a whole lot of quarters into that machine as a young'un. In the 64 version, there is a single row of balloons that moves across the screen using sprites. Once the balloons have been popped, a new row appears a little bit higher. But perhaps the main difference is that this version runs on a timer, which puts a hard stop on how long a game lasts. But enough preamble, let's get typing. This is a pretty big one, taking up more than two full pages in the magazine, including a lot of data statements for the machine code elements. Data statements are a bit annoying to type in, but I always liked when programmers use machine code. The resulting games are so much faster than those written only in BASIC. Compute has added a few notes about the 64 version. First, they indicate that by default, the game is meant to work with Atari paddles, and that if we're using Commodore paddles, we should change two lines. I assume that the Vice emulator I'm using uses the Commodore paddles, so I'll need to remember to make that change. Second, they indicate that the sprite collision routines are written in BASIC, which runs at a relatively slower rate than the 64's internal sprite collision register. This is used to determine whether Blockhead hits a balloon. Ultimately, this timing difference means that balloons will need to be hit square on for them to pop, and that a glancing blow will generally not work. It's hard to know whether this is a bug or a feature, but it's interesting nonetheless. Also interesting is why this version is so different from the original Atari program in the first place. My guess is that the editors were looking for an excuse to have a game with sprites, which was a pretty exciting feature on the new Commodore 64. There are some strange spots in this compute listing. Line 770, 820, and 830 have underlined curly brackets, and line 930 has an underlined double quote with nothing in the print statement. They could just be typos, but it seems off. I'll keep going though, and we'll see what happens. This is part of the fun of doing this, after all. This is a lot of data statements. I purposefully go slow through these sections, double checking the lines as I go. This adds some work up front, but it saves a lot of time later when I'm debugging. At some point, Compute starts using line-by-line -line checksums to verify that the statements are correct, but that didn't exist at this point, so I just need to work through it slowly. Okay, that was the last line of code. Let's just save it so we don't lose our work. We can see on disk that Blockhead takes up 24 blocks, which is about 6K. That's definitely one of the largest that I've typed in so far. And let's run it. <laughs> Never fails. Syntax error in 120. Let's see what that is. Ah, okay. There are some zeros instead of closed brackets. I missed the shift key when typing those. Simple fix. Let's try that again. Oh, 
Oh, that's a cool little tune. There were a series of poke statements related to sound in the code, so I figured it was for something like this. The screen obviously doesn't look right though, it doesn't clear. Wow, what a mess. So the sprite for Blockhead seems good, but there's obviously a lot of other stuff going on here. The paddle controls seem to work fine too, so I wonder if I need to change those lines after all. Anyway, let's see what's going on in 780. Well, that's another easy fix. Hmm, we have a timer, we have Blockhead working fine, but we have no balloons. That's a problem. I'm going to see if Compute published any corrections and also review the code. Compute did in fact issue some corrections in issue 43, four months after this game came out. I'm sure I would have given up long before those fixes were published. It's sure nice having everything available online now. Anyway, the corrections indicate that there were some typographical errors in the code listing, just like I thought. And sure enough, they have corrections for lines 770, 820, and 830, the lines that had the underlying bracket. And in all three cases, they were missing the symbol to change the text color to black. There was no correction for 930 though, so I guess the two double quotes were correct? I've made those corrections, plus a couple of others I found when reviewing the code. So now we have balloons and I can pop them, but the screen isn't clearing, and now I'm getting an illegal quantity error. Crap! The error is in line 750, and it appears fine, so obviously there's a bad value being set for that variable PI. This was frustrating. I spent a fair bit of time reviewing the code again. After reviewing, including all of the data statements I already double checked, I couldn't find any typos but was still running into the same two problems. The screen wasn't clearing and I was occasionally getting that illegal quantity error. I ended up searching for Blockhead Online and I found something super interesting. This game was republished in Compute's first book of Commodore 64 games, which came out later in 1983. In this book, they republished a bunch of games from prior issues. Somewhat ironically, Blockhead is on the cover. When I examined the program listing in the book, there were changes. For starters, that first batch of typos was corrected. And when I looked at line 930, the one with the double quotes, they added the clear screen symbol, which was entirely missing from the magazine, and obviously completely explained why the screen wasn't clearing. They also made some changes to routines that determine how much Blockhead shifts around as he's falling back towards the platform. This didn't correct any errors as such, and it runs in either case, but it does make the movement a bit smoother. Also, I should mention that I figured out the illegal quantity error. It was related to the paddles, and as soon as I made the change I should have made at the beginning, the error went away. But that brings me to a final problem that Compute introduced with the blockhead listing in this book. They added a checksum routine that threw an error if there was a problem with the data statements. That should be a good thing, but it wasn't. This checksum only works with the default data statements, not with the change to make the game work with Commodore Paddles. As soon as you make that change, the checksum throws an error and the program won't start. Fortunately, I know enough basic to fix it, but there were probably a lot of people who were never able to play it with Commodore Paddles, even when it was typed in 100% correctly. But, like we Gen Xers say, whatever. It's working now and we can finally play. The game plays pretty well. Movements are smooth and it's quite colorful. You get 10 points for popping a balloon and lose 15 if Blockhead misses the platform. Interestingly, the score and timer aren't updated until Blockhead is back on the platform. The timer is an interesting choice. It definitely keeps games short and puts a pretty hard limit on the highest score you'll be able to achieve. I feel like 400 points is close to the max. But after all the problems, it feels great to be playing it at all. The game itself is fun and I could see playing it for a little bit, but ultimately the 200 second timer is limiting and it gets repetitive fairly quickly. 
I can't help but think that we're seeing a rare 64 relic here, as it wouldn't have worked for everyone. The various listings for it are sort of a comedy of errors, and I feel like most would have given up long before this point. Anyone typing it in from the magazine, or anyone who had Commodore paddles, would have been completely out of luck without knowing BASIC. So let's chalk this up as a victory and a great learning experience. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please consider leaving a like or subscribing. And if you have any experiences with Blockhead or typing in your own programs, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Hope to see you again.